everyone. Welcome to day one of 30 days of CNCF projects. And today we are going to talk about Kyverno. Kyverno is a powerful policy management tool that allows you to get better control over your Kubernetes resources. And today in this video, we are going to talk about what is it, how it works, the architecture of Kyverno, and also demo it. Let's go. Let's start with explaining what is Kyverno. So Kyverno is a policy management tool for Kubernetes. It basically allows you to define a policy and make sure that everything in your cluster actually matches to the policy you define. And then you can define a compliance against all of your clusters and resources in Kubernetes. Kyverno is built for Kubernetes, so it's native to its resources and the way Kubernetes works. So let's take an example. Let's say that you are a cluster administrator and you want to define that all of the pods and all of the deployments will actually have request and limit for CPU and memory configured. So what you do, you take a policy, a Kyverno policy, you define it, and then you apply it to the cluster and Kyverno will take care of the rest. Kyverno, they actually have a wide variety of policies on the website that what you can do is basically copy paste them, use them, adjust them, and make sure that your cluster actually comply to the policy that you want to define. How Kyverno works? So basically, when there is a request to modify or create a resource within the Kubernetes API, there is a flow and sequence of things that happen. One, the request go through the HTTP handler and then to the authentication authorization service. But then we have two steps where Kubernetes allow us to actually do modification and actually validate the request if we want or maybe even block it. This is where Kyverno comes in. When we're taking a look about the mutating admission controller, the mutating webhook, it allows us to basically take the resource that someone requests from the API and actually mutate and change it based on what we want to have. So we are going back to the example about the, that we want that every resource will have requests and limits. If someone forgot for some reason to add it to its own YAML, then it requests it the mutating admission control, the mutation webhook will allow us to add the request and the limits to the request. And then we are moving to the second step called the validating admission controller when it allows us to validate the request and decide if we want to allow it or block it. And in those two main steps, this is when Kyverno comes in. It allows you to define a policy that will adjust and change the resources based on the policy that you want to define. And then later on, to decide if you want to allow it or block it. It even do not create the resource in the Kubernetes API. And at the bottom, we got the Kyverno engine doing all that magic for you. Later on in this video, we are going to deep dive into how Kyverno works, how the Kyverno engine basically works. Now I want us to focus on the Kyverno architecture. So let's talk a little bit about the main components uh, for policy management. So we got the policies that we need to define. Those are custom resources and custom resource definition that allow us to configure what we want to have in the mutation on the validating webhook. We can take those from the website as we saw before. At the top, we got the admission controller and the engine that actually decide based on the policies we defined, what they should do uh, anytime a request actually come in into the admission controller. The integration between the admission controller to the Kubernetes actually happened within Kubernetes native resources. It comes uh, basically installed with the Helm chart of Kyverno. You don't need to do that on your own. So those are the main components. We got a lot of other capabilities in Kyverno like uh, web configuration for integration, some uh, certification renewal, uh, report controllers, if you want to create reports and basically understand what we had, maybe your CISO wants those reports or the security them. Um, I'm not going to focus that on this video. Maybe if we will do some deep dive on Kaverno later, we will go into that. But you are free to go to the website and basically explore each one of the resources on your own.
what is the unique value of Caverno? So I want us to focus on two main things. One is that Caverno is built for Kubernetes. It's Kubernetes native by nature, and every component in it built in order to run on Kubernetes, and the way the policies are defined are Kubernetes native. So for everyone familiar with Kubernetes, it's a really easy to work with Caverno. The second thing is that the policy enforcement actually happens at the edge or at the end, which is the cluster. Sometimes when we heard about policy management enforcement tool, they run on the CI or the CD pipelines, which kind of do not make it into the cluster. And one of the main problems with that is sometimes something slip into the cluster and then we are not aware of that. So Caverno actually allow us to take the policy to the edge and make it Kubernetes native for our own benefit. What are the alternatives to use Caverno? So there are a lot of them. I want to focus on two of them. One is another open source project called OPA, Open Policy Agent and Gatekeeper, the way to run it on Kubernetes. Those are also CNCF projects uh, which you can use. I don't want to go into the comparison between them, but if you want, you should explore yours. Another alternative is Enterprise License Alternative. Uh, Nirmada is a company working and developing those. Uh, if you want, you can explore the website and use Kiverno, but on enterprise licensing and enterprise support. So in this demo, what we're going to do is install Kiverno and then show you how it works. So let me install that briefly. So Kiverno got a Elm chart. Um, that it's available, we just copy and paste the commands. Uh, on the right side, what we got is a readme file with instruction to, our, to run this demo. If you want, I will add the link into the description of the video so you can actually run it on your own machine. Uh, so we have added Kaverno into our Helm repros, and now we are going to install Kaverno. Okay. Now, sorry. Now we can check the pods and they are actually creating. Something that happens is that Kaverno also create the validation and the mutating webhooks. Those are Kubernetes resources. So if you want kubectl gets validating webhook configurations, uh, we can see that no resource found while those will, while the pods will start. Uh, the validation webhook will be created. So let's wait for a few more seconds. Okay, now everything is running and then we will check. Uh, let me clear the screen. And now we will check and the validation webhook will be created. We can see that all the webhooks were created by Caverno, which is really, really cool. Um, something that else happened is that Caverno installed their CRDs admission reports, if we want to define reports, uh, cleanup policies, cluster admission reports, whatever, whatever. But what we are going to use mainly is policies and cluster policies. Um, okay, so after we understand that everything is installed, we got all our pods up and running, and we got all the web configured, and the CRDs are installed, now we can define our first cluster policy. And what we have in here is basically uh, a really um, simple and basic one. We can see that we have a Caverno policy. Uh, the policy basically it requires requests and limits for every one of our deployments. Uh, we can see the category uh, on the report. We can define based on category severity with the subject of the policy. What is the specification of the policy? For example, it's going to validate failure action and enforce. Uh, run it on the background, uh, validating resource for any pod that would be created. Uh, we will define that um, CPU and memory request and limits are required. Okay, in order, so now we understand what policy do we have, we can apply it. How do we apply it? Copy, paste that. Uh, the policy, the cluster policy actually was created. If you want, uh, we can also do kubectl get cluster 
poly sees. Uh, and you would see that we have this one, admission, background, validate action, and it's ready to use. So the next thing what we want to do is basically uh, see how it works. So in here we got a deployment. It's a really basic deployment, one replica of Nginx. Uh, the problem is that it doesn't have request and limits. Uh, so what is the expected results? We are going to apply it. And we got an error from the Kubernetes API. So error from server or when creating um, admission webhook. And this is where we get, um, this is what did the webhook actually denied the request. This is the webhook Kaverno created. And here we can see that the resource was locked due to the following policies. And here are the policies and what we need to do in order to fix them. It's actually show us what is the exact path uh, in the YAML that we need to fix if we want to do that. Uh, okay, so now we can go back and actually fix that. Uh, I already created a YAML of the same deployment, actually with the request and limits. Uh, you can see in here the request and limits defined. We are going to copy, paste them. And now we can see that our policy uh, was created, uh, our deployment, so it was created and, and the deployment actually passed the validation check. Um, we can also delete the policy if we want. Let's do that. And now what we want to do is to define a different policy. So now we are done. We still have a val validation uh, uh, policy actually works. But let's do something else. Let's say that we don't want to validate. We want to mutate. So if someone actually accidentally deploy the same deployment, but uh, as we did before, we don't want to block, we just want to add automatically the request and limits. So for that, what we are going to do is that we are going to take the cluster policy. So in here, it's a different one. Uh, it's a mutate action, and we can see that we have request and limits of 100 megabytes and, and millicore actually defined by default. So what we are going to do, you are correct. We are going to apply this new cluster policy. Um, and now we are going to use the same deployment as before. So you're going to copy that. You're going to paste it in here. And it was actually created. Uh, what we want to do next is see that our policy to mutate and add a default actually happened. So what we are going to do we are going to take this command, which is going to describe the deployments, and it's going to check and find where the request and limits defined. And here we can see the request and limits actually defined for this deployment. Uh, we can also describe the deployment itself, just to make sure that I am not uh, um, I am not a liar. Uh, and here. The new deployment that we just created got request and limits, although in the original YAML it was not defined. And this is very basic example of how you can use Kaverno in order to define your request and limits policies within your clusters. You can one validate those and and make sure that if someone made a request that does not comply with the policy, it will be rejected from the Kubernetes API. And on the other side, if you want to help them and make it more smoother for them to use, you can define those as default and use the mutation webhook in order to add the defaults when they try to submit something. Uh, you can also, by the way, create resources um, as mutate them. So, for example, if someone deploy a deployment and it requires a network policy or a service to be created for it, you can actually create a new resource, for example, like a service, when the deployment is created. Um, and that's it. We can delete everything. And this is the demo. If you want to watch more, you can watch the next videos. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this. What is Kiverno? First day of CNCF project. And see you tomorrow. By the way, something glad before we are done. Uh, I'm going to put a sticker of Kaverno over my 30 days of CNCF project board. So, day one. See you tomorrow.